Hi everybody, my name is Matt Fenwick, and I'm a developer at Huddle. Hey, I see you. How you doing? What's up? And uh, this is the first time I've been in this meetup, so I'm really excited to meet everybody for the first time. And um, let's see. So I'm going to tell you about a little library that I wrote called unparse-js. And uh, it's a parser combinator library, and it's kind of an application of functional programming. So if anybody else is really into functional programming mm -hmm. and big nerd about that, then I'd love to talk to you and hear what you have to say about it. Um, mostly I did this because it was really fun and really interesting. So it might not be the most practical thing in the world, but fun, interesting, and I learned a whole lot. Cool, so I don't have any slides prepared. I'm just gonna try and do it with three web pages. All right, so first of all, I have a GitHub project for it. It's right up here. My GitHub name is Matt Fenwick. The project name is unparse-js. You can also find it on NPM. Uh, my name is also Matt Fenwick, and the package is unparse-js. So let me just kind of tell you a little bit about this without getting into too much detail, but basically it's recursive descent is how it works, and there's like kind of four or five layers that I think about when I'm writing code. So there's the parse results, and what it lets you do is have parse parsing succeed, fail, or have an error. Uh, there's parsers. And that's basically just like a function wrapper. So then from those, there's basic parsers, which are like building blocks. Then there are combinators that you can use to put the parsers together and make bigger parsers. And then finally, when I was building practical parsers for this, I realized um, there's some patterns that I was doing over and over and over and over. And I made some extra combinators for building syntax trees. So you know, if you go and look at this code on GitHub, you can find it all in there. Um, if you ever do actually look at it and you think that it's just terrible JavaScript or doesn't make sense or whatever, you know, feel free to hit me up with some questions and ask me what's going on, or leave a comment saying that you hate my code and think it's stupid. <laughs> it's all good. Um, yeah, so does it work? Yes. I had a whole lot of fun building a parser for the JSON format with it, and the reason that I did that was because um, there was some linting that I wanted to do, and the lending tools that I found out there weren't doing the kind of checking that I wanted. Like if you have duplicate keys in an object, for instance, I couldn't actually find a tool that would do that for me. So I built my own using this library. And it was really cool. It turned out to be a very small amount of code. And because it's basically just pure JavaScript, it's really easy to write tests for it and then get those tests running automatically. Uh, all right, so nerd time. Monads, monad transformers, monad stacks effects, things like that. Okay, nobody's getting excited about this, but I'm super excited about this kind of thing. Um, there's a stack of basically five different effects. So there's one state for parsing. It looks at parsing as sequence by, or character by character, stepping through a sequence of characters, like a string or something. There's another state that it uses to keep track of the position. Um, it has backtracking, does errors, and it does logging. So if you want to do like a trace of what's going on during parsing, then you can just stick that into the monad stack there. All right, so that's the end of nerd time. Let me just tell you again, it was really fun. I learned a whole lot, but it might not be the most practical thing. Uh, it's open source, it's on GitHub, so you know, feel free to look at the code and do whatever you want with it, I don't really care. And um, if you want to have nerd time about functional programming, definitely hit me up. And that's all I got, any questions? Yeah. Uh, we can just continue your time a moment. I don't, <laughs> sure. I don't mean to torture you, yeah. but I would love to hear you define the word monad. Um, but it's okay. Like, it's a hard have you ever heard of the monad burrito fallacy? Oh, what's that one? You should look it up. It's a real fallacy. Okay. And if I tried to explain it right now, I would succumb to that fallacy. Okay. So I'm going to not do that. It's like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a brother named Ben? Yes, I do. I took a class with him. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll come back to your question. So, you can think of Monad as just like an interface, an abstract class, you know, just something like that that's useful, but it's not actually necessary to understand this code. Um, but if you do know that, you see that it's a pattern that can be applied to other kinds of things. So, it's basically a common pattern that people found was useful to capture as like an interface or if you're talking about Haskell type class or something like that. Okay. But as far as actually like defining it, that's not really something I can do right now. That's as good as the answer today, I think. <laughs>
Cool. Well, thanks everybody for your attention.